Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here are two problems. You can consider them an appetizer and a main course. Problem one, the appetizer. In the equation x squared plus mx plus n is equal to zero, m and n are integers. The only possible value for x is negative three. What is the value of m plus n? This is said to be one of the hardest questions on the American standardized test, the ACT. Problem two. Here's a really incredible and challenging question. Solve for the parameter a, for which the sum of all the real valued roots to the equation sine of the square root of ax minus x squared is equal to zero is exactly equal to 100. I thank Irakli for the suggestion, and this comes from a problem in the country Georgia's math exam. Pause the video if you'd like to give these problems a try, and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve these problems. Let's get started with problem one. So we have a quadratic equation where the only possible value for x is negative three. That means x is equal to negative three is a double root. So if x is equal to negative three is a double root, the quadratic equation can have two factors where each factor is x minus negative three. So the quadratic equation is equal to the square of the term x minus a negative three. This simplifies to be the square of x plus three. Expanding this binomial gives x squared plus six x plus nine. Equating coefficients, we get that m is equal to six and n is equal to nine. So m plus n is equal to 15. And that's the answer. Now let's solve problem two. So how can we solve this problem? Let's work it out step by step. To begin, let's look at the graph of y is equal to sine of x. We will recall that sine of x is equal to zero exactly at multiples of pi. So we need the square root of ax minus x squared to be equal to multiples of pi. Now, since we have the square root of something, we're going to have the multiple start with zero because the square root of something will be a non-negative value. So we have zero, pi, two pi, three pi, all the way up to n times pi. Once x gets too large, the thing inside the square root will be negative, so we can't have any more solutions. So let's take our equation and set it equal to the maximum value n times pi. We can square both sides of the equation and then we can make this into the canonical form of a quadratic equation. x squared minus ax plus n squared times pi squared is equal to zero. What can we say about this quadratic equation? Well, for one thing, we can figure out the sum of its roots. We take the opposite of the coefficient on the x term divided by the leading term on x squared, and this will be the sum of the roots. So the two roots, x1 and x2, will have a sum that's equal to a. Furthermore, we need real roots for this equation. That means the discriminant has to be greater than or equal to zero. So the discriminant will be this term squared minus four times this coefficient times this coefficient, and that works out to be a squared minus four n squared pi squared, and we need this to be greater than or equal to zero. Let's solve this equation for n. So first we have n squared is less than or equal to a squared over four pi squared. Now n has to be a non-negative number. So that means a is also non-negative. So taking square roots, we have n is less than or equal to a over two pi. But we know that n has to be an integer. So we'll set n to be equal to the floor of a divided by two pi. In other words, Whatever a divided by two pi is, we'll get rid of the decimal portion and just take the whole integer portion. 
from n is less than or equal to a over 2 pi. We can also multiply both sides of the equation by 2 pi to get that 2 pi n is less than or equal to a. So where do we go from here? So let's imagine we set our equation equal to 0. Well, in this case, we know the sum of the two roots is equal to a. So we know that a is right here. We can then do the same thing if we set the equation equal to pi. The sum of the two roots will be equal to a, so we add a. We go one more time, the sum of the roots will again be equal to a. In each of these cases, the sum of the roots will be equal to a. The final case will be when we set the equation equal to n pi, the sum of the roots will be equal to a. So now, the sum of the roots is a plus a plus a for a total of n plus 1 times, because we have pi n and we need to include 0. But we also know that the sum of the roots is exactly equal to 100. So we have n plus 1 multiplied by a is equal to 100. So let's focus on this equation. Now utilizing the fact that a is greater than or equal to 2 pi n, if we substitute 2 pi n for a, we're going to get something that's less than or equal to 100. So 100 is greater than or equal to the quantity n plus 1 multiplied by 2 pi n. This allows us to figure out an upper bound on n. Let's see what happens if we substitute n is equal to 3. If we substitute this in, we get a value of approximately 75.4. This is less than 100. But if we substitute n is equal to 4, we end up with something that's larger than 100. So we can't have any value of n that's 4 or larger. Since n is a non-negative integer, we only have to test the values 0, 1, 2, and 3. So let's go ahead and see which value actually works. From the equation n plus 1 multiplied by a is equal to 100, we can solve that a is equal to 100 divided by n plus 1. So let's start out that n is equal to 0. If we substitute in, we get that a is equal to 100, but then we also need n to be the floor of a divided by 2 pi. But in this case, the floor of 100 divided by 2 pi will be 15, and we already said that n needs to be equal to 0. So this case can't work. Let's substitute n is equal to 1. We can then solve that a is equal to 50, but once again, n will not be equal to the floor of a divided by 2 pi. So this doesn't work. We substitute n is equal to 2. We get a is equal to 33 and 1 third, but then n will not be equal to the floor of a divided by 2 pi. We can check the final case that n is equal to 3. We get a is equal to 25, and n is in fact equal to the floor of a divided by 2 pi, which is equal to 3. So this case works, and we get that a is equal to 25. Now just for good measure, we can go ahead and we can graph this, and we can see that the sum of all of the roots to this equation will exactly be equal to 100. And thus, a is equal to 25 is the answer. What an incredible question. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.